Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. But we congregate. We learn the word of God. This is the true word of God. This is that you blacks and Native American and Spanish are the children of Israel. That's right. But exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. See, as you see the day approaching, exhorting each other, that's what you need. You need fellowship. You got righteous peoples around you, then when you're in the midst of sin or when you're falling out, you got those brothers and those sisters that'll correct you. They'll tell you what you're doing wrong. You're not going to get that in the world. They're not going to correct you in the world. That's why it's best to fellowship. Because when you fellowship, you among people that actually really care about you. And they say, oh man, sister, you out the spirit today. That ain't how you supposed to be acting up, bro. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, man. Some know you, man. You ain't, you ain't yourself. You know what I'm saying? Usually, you, usually you're smiling, you, you're fellowshipping, you're shaloning. Now, now it's like, a man, it seems like something on you. You can't get that in the world. You got to get that here. Congregate one to another. Verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. All right. Don't forsake the assembly. Now, I know you got that flyer in your hand. And you're looking at it, you're thinking about it in your mind, right? Are you persuaded that you're an Israelite? That's the question. I'm persuaded, man. I don't, I, honestly, I'll be honest with you. You got too much going on in Chicago. It got too much going on in Chicago. But the thing is, we don't really want you to know Chicago. I ain't trying to know. We want you to know the Most High God. That's, right. That's what we want you to know. We don't want you to know Chicago, because Chicago got a lot of things in a lot of other cities. Can I say something? I I sure, go ahead, so she got a question. Okay, he said there's a whole bunch of things going on in Chicago, but in the last days, we talk about the things that's going on in Chicago and around the whole world. Some people tell me that they don't know why. I just said, you need to just go to the Bible. You live in the time that he said. This is, this is, exactly. this is what he said. And for it to be coming to pass, how you must you must don't know the love of God. You must not be in the spirit because you clearly you clearly into the world because when when you read the Bible, God is speaking to you. He got his hands on you, especially when you know that we living in our last days. This is crazy, like. Now, okay, I understand. I understand exactly what you said, and you're right. He did prophesy these things gonna happen. Moses said it a long time ago. Christ was bringing it out when he was coming, and so was all the other prophets. So this ain't nothing new. But the reason why these is happening is because we transgress the commandments. Do you know what sin is? You know what sin is? What is sin? Sin. What is sin? Hey, yeah, that's true. True. Exactly. And that's what sin is. And as you know, we transgress sinning by breaking the commandments that was given to us and was given to our forefathers. Right. Each and every day we come out here, everybody that's walking around that don't want to hear the word, we transgress those laws. And that's the reason why we're in the situation that we're in now. The book of 2 Timothy, chapter 1 and verse 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. See what I'm saying? So it ain't no need to, it ain't no need for us to have fear of anything that's going on because the Lord haven't given us the spirit of fear. He ain't given us the spirit of fear. What he gave us, read. Put of power and of love and of a sound mind. There you go. That's what God gave you. So it ain't, ain't. That's why it's important to congregate. Like the scripture say, give me that in Old, uh, Old Test congregate. That's why it's important to congregate. 
You know what I'm saying? Because it was a commandment. It was a commandment to come together. When you, when you come together with righteous brothers and sisters, it builds your faith. Not only it builds your faith, it builds your courage. You understand what I'm saying? Read. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23 and verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, Concerning the feasts of the Lord, which he shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. Now, as you say, when you congregate, we also have feast days. We have days where we enjoy the most high feast days. That's another reason for you to congregate, because you want to congregate with righteous brothers when you enjoy these, these high holy days. Not high holy days. Let me ask you something. You celebrate Christmas. You celebrate Easter. So you don't celebrate none of our Memorial Day. Okay, so you just celebrate your birthday. You celebrate your birthday? Don't uh, be honest. You celebrate those days. Okay. But um, when I first had my daughter, I wasn't allowed. Because I know, I know who I am. Right. But um, we just started going in. Um, you know, because it's just a mixed up people that she be around. So I didn't feed my daughter pork or nothing. But when I used to go to work and stuff, people used to just give her stuff from her being around other people catching on okay, to stuff that okay, they do. Okay, okay. So, yeah, like. So you have, so. Yeah, absolutely. So. Do you celebrate those days now? Christmas, Thanksgiving, any of them. Do you celebrate those days? So like when you say celebrate, like, like Christmas. Christmas. Okay, Christmas. You get Christmas toys, things like that, do you? Yeah, I got toys. Give me that in jam, Mike. I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you the difference between the world high holy days and the Lord high holy days. Bring it on. I'm going to show you the difference. I mean, because people did not know that Christmas was actually in the Bible. Did you know that? That is actually in the Bible. We finna show it to, we finna bring it out to everybody that's walking around here that Christmas is in the Bible. Read. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 10 and verse two. Yeah. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. First he said, learn not the way of the heathen. Do you know what the word heathen mean? Any one of y'all know what the word heathen mean? Anybody outside of us, anybody outside of the Israelites yeah. is a heathen. Now, if you look up the definition, heathen means other nations. Yeah. And it'll tell you any other nation outside of the Israelites yeah. were heathens. Yes. So he's telling you, learn not the ways of the other nations, the other peoples, the peoples that you see walking around, the Chinese, the Japanese. The whites, the Caucasians is what they really are. You know what I'm saying? He say, learn not they ways. The Arabs. No, I'm going to tell you why he said, learn not they ways. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. The heathens are dismayed at the signs of heaven. They want to go into the horoscope. They want to read the stars. You understand what I'm saying? They want to go into space. The heathens are amazed with this thing. This is like, this is like, wow, this is like fantastic to them. They can't stop thinking about it. They go to bed thinking about it. They wake up thinking about it. That's why they keep trying to get up there. They're amazed by it. For the customs of the people are vain. What is vain? The custom of the peoples are vain. The custom of the other nations are vain. What is it? Evil. Not vain is like wicked. Vain means like lies. Vain means lies. Their customs is lies. That's what he's telling you. Read. For what cut a day tree out of the forest? Uh oh. Uh oh. What cut a tree out of the forest? You know I'm going somewhere. I saw you smirk a little bit. I'm going somewhere with it. They cut a tree out of the forest. The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. The one that cut it down with the axe. This is the man doing the work. You see him selling them every year. They deck it with silver and with gold. Now read that loud, so. They deck it with silver and with gold. They deck it with silver and gold. Silver and gold. <laughs> now you know. <laughs> 
what it's talking about. But let's see what he say about it. They fastened it with nails and with hammers that it moved not. They used to do it with nails and hammers, you know, back in the day. So the tree will stand up. Now they got the stand for it, so it'll stand up. They are upright as the palm tree. The tree stand up like the palm tree. You know that. They deck it with silver and gold. Now I'm asking you, sister, um, what holiday is that? What holiday is that? He said, learn not the ways of the heat. He said, learn not the ways of the heat. So, you're not supposed to be celebrating Christmas. That means she don't get no gifts. You don't get no gifts. I know that's hard. That's hard. You understand what I'm saying? That's hard for you to do like. You know, you think about it because you grew up on that cousin. We all grew up on that cousin. Every last one of us out here grew up on them customs. You understand what I'm saying? Every last one of us. So it's like a hard thing to let it go. Right or wrong? Right or wrong? Okay. But if you love God, give me that. If you love God, though, you say it's hard. It's hard to do. It's hard to let go. But let's see what God say. The, the book of St. John, chapter 14, verse 15. Yeah. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Uh, I'm going to go first, John. We finna show you. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. We finna get, get another scripture that's gonna say the same thing. Because we want you to know that it's not hard. God says it's not hard. So we finna prove it right now. The book of 1 John chapter 5 verse 3. Bring it up. For this is the love of God. This is the love of God. Sister, come closer. Come closer. Come closer. I see you looking. This is the love of God. You want to know what the love of God is? We finna show you what the love of God is. Read. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and... Hold on. Hold on. We don't want that to, we don't want that to go past. This is the love of God that we... Who is the we? The so-called blacks, Native American, and Hispanics. That's the right. Israelites. Because that's, right. that's who the commandment was given to. That's right. Read. That we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. What does that mean, sis? He screamed black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.